Hey there, and welcome to Fez 11 Years Later. I'm making this video because I was playing Fez at the same time as Lightfall was released for Destiny 2. And boy, that was kind of a letdown. Well, the uglier they are, the harder they fall, right? I still enjoy Destiny 2, but it's exhausting experiencing its ups and downs, and sometimes I just want to play a fun video game. And Fez is a fun video game that's a decade old, but it's still timeless. I want to note that this isn't a comparison between the two games. I simply want to share my appreciation of a timeless video game. Also, a spoiler warning, I know this game is like 11 years old at this point, but I seriously believe you should play it for yourself and try your best to figure out as much as you possibly can before you spoil yourself. It's that good. With the spoiler warning out of the way, let me give a brief description of Fez. It's part of the puzzle platformer genre where our protagonist, Gomez, is a two-dimensional character in a three-dimensional world. You'll travel across the world looking for bits and cubes of a hexahedron that's basically an eldritch god, or at least talks like one. As if English wasn't weird enough, now I gotta learn how to speak square. The setting of Fez is diverse and beautiful and has an amazing soundtrack to boot, with several areas sporting different themes and gimmicks for you to play around. Although Fez's core gameplay is quite simple, some of the puzzles will definitely make you scratch your chin as you try to figure it out. There are also these black holes that appear from time to time that block your path. Sometimes I could problem solve my way around them, although sometimes I had to leave and come back later. You'll need 32 cubes to beat the game, and once you have those, you walk through a stargate, climb an ancient alien monument dedicated to an owl. You cross the threshold of all creation, entering the void, and that's it, you beat the game. Now watch Gomez go crazy with drums. Hell of a description, right? But we're not done yet. That's only half of Fez. After beating the game once, you can re-enter the save under New Game Plus. Spoiler warning again, because this is when shit gets wild. So once you load into New Game Plus, it's not gonna look like much has changed until you get to the initiation. Where you watch Gomez get some fresh swag straight out of 2013, and you get the ability to look around in first person. I'll tell you straight up, when I saw this, my jaw dropped to the floor like Jessica Rabbit just walked past me. I was amazed because I had previously completed the game, like a month earlier, and never started a new game plus, so I never saw this. Needless to say, that was a mistake. This is when I tell you that Fez's secrets go deeper than you would ever expect. So with my newfound power, I set out and did absolutely nothing with it for a while. I thought it was just a neat gimmick to be impressed with. So I spent hours looking for secrets, collecting all the anticubes I could find. Anticubes are collectibles, among others, you find after completing a secret. Now where was I? Oh yeah. I spent hours looking for these. But I was stumped with these purple monoliths and was losing hope. Until I found it. The Index. In this room right here, this monolith, which was foreshadowed by this room, which is also important, can be used to decipher the codes on the monoliths and other things. Then it all started to click. I started inputting codes from left to right and up to down. I felt like a genius. It was awesome. I even deciphered the map puzzle by myself and got to the skull room. My brain was wrinkled, dude. I had a bunch of sticky notes with code scribbled on them and possible theories on how to crack them. It looked like I belonged in an insane asylum. But alas, after that, I was at wit's end. 
I don't have footage of this, so you'll just have to believe me. I needed six or seven more anti-cubes and a few other puzzles, so I decided to give in and look them up. And boy, I'm glad I did. Some of these remaining puzzles were so convoluted I would have never completed them on my own. One was the Tetromino puzzle, where you had to give the last pattern of how to fold a cube. Another was the clock puzzle. I had to set my internal clock two months in the future to acquire that cube. There was the boiler room. That one I had to look up the number cipher. There was the observatory. That one was bullshit. I just didn't know how to input the code. The black monolith puzzle. I looked that one up and found out that the community brute forced it. So there was no way I was doing that on my own. But then the last one. This one is solvable in game, or not, depending on how you view it. I would have never solved it regardless. This monolith is asking for a name, and you have to spell it out using these rotatable cues with the decipherable symbols on them, with the only hint being, my first half is what it is, my second half is half of what made it. Want to know the answer? It's Metatron. Why is it Metatron? Because Meta is what it is, and Tron is the second half of Polytron, the developers of the game. Not to mention that Metatron refers to Metatron's cube, which is considered to be divine geometry, and is also referenced by the owls. Absolutely bonkers. Once you get all 64 cubes and return to the alien world, this happens.
Yeah, it's crazy. You also get the stereoscopy mode when you enter the game for a third time. And that's what Fez has to offer, except for one last room. You can only open it after gathering all 64 cubes. What forms inside is found in pieces from the most difficult puzzles. The observatory binary code, the black monolith, and the Metatron room. They all harbor a piece of Fez's final puzzle, the heart. Supposedly, the heart is a reference to the Kokoromi Indie Collective, which the creator, Bill Fish, love that name by the way, was a founder of. It's Fez's greatest unsolved mystery, because it has a code dedicated to it, but all it does is shimmer the heart away and restart the game. It's been speculated that this heart was going to have something to do with Fez 2, the cancelled sequel to Fez. I'm not even gonna try to explain why Fez 2 was cancelled. That whole can of worms is beyond the scope of this video, and there's no reason to bring up the past. All I can say for certain is that the story of Fez just has one loose end, and it's a shame we'll never see it resolved. Although its full potential may be unrealized, what could have been is not what you should feel. What we have is what you should appreciate. Fez is timeless, so wonderful and joyous to play, especially when it seems like video games today are becoming more of a service than a game. But we'll always have games like this to appreciate. My name is Free Range Chickens, and thanks for watching. Peace out.